Welcome back. My name is Jim Kaysen. We're talking about how to get to know God intimately. And we need to examine the whole Bible, which we've been working at for this last year. And now we're talking about how to be led by the Spirit. Now, don't, don't stop. Don't say, oh, well, I've heard all about that. No, hold on. <laughs> I decided to do this and, and using myself and all the successes we had since 1975 and all the failures that we had and believing that by using all of these illustrations of my own life, that it'll help you prevent, will help you to avoid some failures if you just learn to understand the difference between spirit, soul, and body. So we've been, we've been working on establishing some, uh, you know, a foundation to share this. So I felt I had to share my testimony. And so we're finally coming to the place now where uh, God's finally having his way and, and I, I once again with the unconscious leading. All right, now, here's where we left off. In the last Thursday of that March of 1972, I decided, what is the use of staying sober? It's sheer willpower. What's the use? You know, I'm still in AA and all that sort of stuff. And so I decided, well, I'm, I'm, I'm done. And I decided, believe it or not, for the third time, I'm heading for that same bridge. And I still have, I'm still in Minot, so I still have 200 miles to drive to get there. So I started making my plans and getting everything in order. And wouldn't you know it, this is on Thursday now. And so the next day on Friday, my neighbors knock on, their do on my door. And they invited me to their, uh, Kathleen and I, to their home the following Tuesday night. Now I decided to, this is on Thursday when I was planning to hit the bridge, and I decided that I would make the trip the following Thursday. I would go and leave home and hit the bridge. Well now, so Thursday I'm planning, Friday they show up, and they invite me to, Kathleen and I, to their home for a Bible study. Well, I said, I says, well, I agreed to come. Now I don't know why I said that, because I knew I didn't need that Bible study. And, 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 and we in AA talked about God more than the Christians did, you know, and all that sort of, pretty arrogant, and, and, and all that sort of stuff. Well, what happened then, the following Tuesday, I went. Not, I didn't need all that stuff they had, but I decided I would set those dumb church people straight about us AA people. We talked about God more than they did, blah, 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 blah. I was just a big mouth, arrogant guy. And so I, we showed up on Tuesday night. Now, I never did get a chance to open my mouth <laughs> and make a fool out of myself, I guess. And as I look back, they were born again. And what I did, I walked into their home and the presence of God was there. And I guess that got my attention because I listened. And now I found out later that they never had do, had they never had had Bible studies before in their home. This was the first time, and it was with fear and trembling. But now get this: see, here's how the Holy Spirit worked. Now He's working with people who are not baptized in the Holy Spirit, but they're born again. And their pastor said, "Now look, don't take it for granted that the people in your neighborhood are uh, born again, even if you know that they're going to you know a certain church." And we, of course, belong to, you know, a big denomination. And, of course, they obeyed the pastor. And the pastor equipped them with Campus Crusade material, you know, Bill Bright. And, of course, the very first thing they used for their Bible study was the track that Bill Bright put together called Four Spiritual Laws. And that was the Bible study that night. So they went through the whole pamphlet of the, or little booklet of the Four Spiritual Laws. Now, at the end of that, they said, okay, how many of you uh, would like to pray the prayer? And, of course, they, they asked each one of us individually, and they got to me. Jim, would you like to pray the prayer and ask Jesus to come in your heart? And blah, 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 like it said in the end of that, 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 that pamphlet. And I said, yes, everybody. Now, get this. There were 14 other neighbors that showed up in addition to Kathleen and I. And all of us asked yeah. So they led us in a, uh, all together in a prayer, together. They asked Jesus to come into our heart. So one by one again, they come around. They got to me, 
Jim, did you pray the prayer? I says, yeah. He says, where's Jesus? I don't know. <laughs> we never read the Bible at home. Uh, my parents never read the Bible to us. Never read Bible stories to us when we went to bed or anything like that. I was totally ignorant. Well, so they went and shared this whole thing all over again. I guess everybody else had to get it the second time too. <laughs> so then we prayed again. And it says, well, we, we, you pray by faith, is what they said, by faith. So by faith, I asked Jesus to come into my heart. By faith, I didn't feel anything. And I like to get excited. I do get excited about things. There was nothing to get excited about. It was what I call cold turkey. Both for my wife and I. Both went home. I was kind of like, not, we just felt nothing happened, you know. And Wednesday was dead. I was getting things together for Thursday morning for the bridge and all that stuff. And my wife knew nothing about it, of course. And, uh, but there was nothing. But Thursday morning, Tuesday night, we're born again. Thursday morning, I come out of the bedroom, head for the kitchen, and I hit the kitchen. And Kathleen, instead of saying good morning, she said, Jim, you're not cussing anymore. That's how foul my mouth was. And when she said that, something inside of me stirred. And I knew that Jesus was in me. How he got in there, I don't know. But I'll never take his name in vain again. Now, I'm a child, I'm 29 years old, you know, college graduate, military soldier, and all that sort of stuff. And yet, I knew he was in there. And I'll tell you what, something happened because both Kathleen and I just, I mean, our whole nature changed. And I never have, and needless to say, the trip to the bridge was canceled. And from that point on, from that Thursday on, Kathleen and I would open the Bible and read, and it was like Jesus talking to us. See, I didn't know the Word was made flesh, that the Word was Jesus, and Jesus talking to us, and it's still the same today. Praise God, at least in spite of all the challenges we had through the years, we, it's kind of like Job. <laughs> we never gave up on God. <laughs> even though things look hopeless. And praise God for that. So that's how that started. Now see, if the pastor, he was, he was led by the Holy Spirit. I believe he was. And he instructed his congregation to do what he did. And he gave them the materials to be able to do it. And then, of course, he assigned the Keysackers, you know, gave them their books. That, that, was, the home, that was the name of the home there, uh, Cecil and his wife, uh, Cecil Keysackers. And um, they obeyed God. And with fear and trembling, they knocked on the door, but they obeyed God. And because they're obeying God, and that was unconscious leading of the Holy Spirit, they were doing it, you know, in the flesh, you know, and just and all this sort of stuff. And But had they not obeyed God, I would not be here today. I was on my way for the third time and three times, and you're out. I guess that's how it goes. So, the importance of obeying God. And those are two big words in the Bible. Obedience and disobedience. And it still applies for today. You can go back to Deuteronomy in chapter 28, and you say, well, that's Old Testament. Yeah, but there's, there's principles in the Old Testament that are still for today. Not, for example, obedience. It's still for today. And you go back and, and you read the blessings and, uh, on obedience in, at verse 1 of, of chapter 28 of Deuteronomy. And of course, here's, I mean, just blessings coming out of your ears for the next 14 verses. But then in verse 15, but it shall come to pass if you do not obey the voice of the Lord to observe all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you today, that all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. And that these curses go all the way up uh, to the end of the chapter, which is what? I mean, 60 verses. The curses go on and on and on. And the chapter finally ends in, 60, in verse 68. It's just the same thing today. Disobedience opens the door for the devil to come in your life and raise Cain. Obedience keeps the door out of your keeps the devil out of your life and you can and you're protected by God and away we go and we enjoy the blessings. Well, 
the end of that session, or this session, I should say. And we will look forward to seeing you again in the next session as we continue to carry on with How to Be Led by the Spirit. Amen.